people's well-being levels is not a sufficient statistic. We want to distinguish between the case in which someone ends up at a well-being level you know, uh, 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 because she's had bad luck uh, and a case in which uh, she ends up there uh, because of poor choices. Um, so uh, it would be nice to uh, uh, generalize prioritarianism into uh, some uh, sort of luck prioritarianism. Uh, uh, and this talk uh, considers how to uh, do so. Uh, Dick Arneson uh, um, uh, has proposed a uh, specific structure for luck prioritarianism, namely desert prioritarianism. Uh, and in a forthcoming Utilitas article, uh, I argue that desert prioritarianism is a non-starter. Uh, and so what I'm going to try to do in this talk is both explain my objections to desert prioritarianism uh, and to explore alternative structures for uh, luck prioritarianism. Uh, and so what the flow is going to be, uh, if I keep to it, uh, first to talk about this notion of claims versus outcome mm -hmm. claims. Uh, uh, which is my sort of uh, way to justify uh, uh, prioritarianism. To talk about that, just to review how that works with undifferentiated responsibility desert. Uh, then talk about uh, the possibility of desert prioritarianism. Uh, and then finally, uh, this is what I want to be sure to get to, because uh, uh, this is really a work in progress and I really need input on this. Uh, I'm going to add other things, but I'm really you know, sort of working with my views on, on, on this last part. Um, what are the different possibilities? Uh, can we uh, uh, modulate claims by individual responsibility? Can we talk about people having claims not just to well-being, uh, but indeed uh, rather to well-being opportunity? Uh, um, okay, so that's what I'm going to try to uh, accomplish. Um, so the basic idea, um, you know, the framework sort of stated generically uh, is this. Um, uh, morality uh, takes the form of quasi-ordering, uh, a reflexive transitive, not necessarily uh, complete uh, a ranking of outcomes. So I'm working within consequentialism. We can talk about that, but I'm just thinking that it's given. Uh, so there's a set of outcomes, X, Y, Z. Outcomes are you know, either whole worlds or uh, models of worlds, cognitively factual models of worlds. So you can think of them uh, for, for these purposes as being a whole uh, uh, possible worlds. Um, this simply indicates that x is at least as good as y, uh, uh, that's equally good as y, uh, y uh, better than x. Uh, throughout, I'm talking here about ethical goodness or moral goodness of uh, outcomes. Um, uh, now, I, uh, uh, like lots of others, uh, view um, morality as grounded in the separateness of persons. Um, I'm assuming here a fixed population, I'm not dealing with variable population issues. Um, and the idea is that uh, the set of outcomes is ranked from the perspective of each person, and the ethical ranking of outcomes is somehow built up from the totality of these person-centered rankings. Right? So this is, in effect, a person-affecting view of morality. We start with these person-centered rankings of outcomes, one for each of the young people in the population, uh, and then somehow derive uh, the ethical ranking, social ranking, you might call it, from uh, these person-centered rankings. So, um, if that's the framework, then the following principles, call them the generic Pareto principles, seem compelling. Right? Now, we're sort of leaving open what the currency is for each individual ranking. What makes it the case that um, one outcome is better or worse than another from the standpoint of a given person? So, leaving that open, at least generically, we could say uh, uh, that. Um, Sorry. Um, thank you, Apple. Uh, so the, the generic principles uh, 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 say uh, that if two outcomes are equal from the standpoint uh, of each person, uh, then they're equally morally good. Right? Uh, uh, if each of the end standpoints is such that these standpoints are indifferent between the two outcomes, then the two outcomes are equally morally good. And generic strong Pareto, um, if one outcome 
Uh, it is more highly ranked than another from the standpoint of, of at least one person, and at least as highly ranked from each person's standpoint, then it's a better outcome. Right, so these are generic statements of the Pareto principle, leaving open what the currency is for these person-centered rankings. Okay. That's a generic framework, and then my notion of claims or claims across outcomes is a way to make this framework you know, sharper and more precise. Um, so in a cross-outcome claim, uh, uh, or for short sure, talks about the claim, uh, uh, claims can have different structures, but claims here are always sort of these cross-outcome claims, is a relation between an individual and two outcomes. So a given individual I has, there are four valences. Uh, in, uh, I can have a claim in favor of X over Y, a claim in favor of Y over X, a no claim, uh, uh, or maybe an incomparable claim. So these are the four valences uh, for these uh, uh, claims, which again are a relation between two outcomes uh, and one uh, person. Okay, so now we're gonna consider how to fill out this framework with a simple case of undifferentiated responsibility uh, or uh, dessert. So we're going to imagine that individuals just don't differ in any relevant respect with respect to how deserving they are or responsible uh, they are. So in this case, at least, I find it compelling that the currency, right, uh, uh, what, are, what, what it is in light of outcomes that drives uh, of the outcomes, uh, the rank, the person said the rankings uh, of these outcomes, the currency for the person said the rankings is individual well-being. Right, that is to say, X is at least as good as Y from the standpoint of individual I, if and only if X is at least as good as Y for individual I's well-being. Right, well-being, leaving aside differences in deserved responsibility, uh, would seem to be the natural currency for these person-centered uh, rankings. And so again, in this case, to put this in the language of claims, uh, in the case of undifferentiated responsibility dessert, individual I's claims, uh, or individual's claims are valenced by well-being, that is, individual I has a claim to X over Y, if and only if she is better off, better off in terms of well-being, X uh, to Y over X, if, she, if and only if she is better off in Y than X, she's got a no claim uh, if she's equally well off, and she has an incomparable claim uh, uh, if um, she's incomparably well off. So, with only that, uh, I argue, uh, 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 we can get to these three fundamental principles for ranking uh, outcomes, right? Uh, the well-being creator principles, uh, and uh, anonymity, right? And we can use this apparatus of claims, again, uh, uh, of valence in terms of well-being, to get to these. Uh, well, being creator, of course, says that if uh, each person is equally well off uh, with one outcome as she is with the other, then they're equally good. In terms of claims, each person is a no claim, and so there's nothing to speak between the outcomes. They're equally good. Now, I should say that these, uh, the framework and these principles do not assume that well-being is numerically measurable, but just to make the presentation more accessible, um, uh, I have uh, uh, um, uh, well-being numbers here. These are vectors of well-being numbers, right? Uh, and so, in terms of well-being numbers, uh, well-being creator of difference means that, you know, if each person's well-being numbers are the same, the two outcomes are equally good. Well-being from Pareto, that supports the case in which one person, at least one person, is better off. So she's got a, a, an affirmative claim in favor of that outcome, uh, and everyone else uh, is uh, equally well off. They have no claims, and so the balance of claims points in favor of one outcome. That's got to be better. Now, the neat thing I think about the claims framework is, I mean, it's not surprising we can use the claims framework to get to uh, the well-being Pareto principles, but we can also use it, I suggest, to get to Pagudolan. Right? Pagudolan, I've got a long you know, precise statement here, but basically what it says is if we have a uh, pure rank-preserving transfer of well-being from someone better off to someone worse off, that's an ethical improvement. So we start with higher better off than lower, and higher loses a certain amount, and lower gains by the same amount. So this is not a leaky transfer of well-being, it's a pure transfer of well-being. And uh, higher ends up still not worse off than lower, right? In that kind of case, I want to say, assuming undifferentiated dessert, it's compelling to think that the transfer is an ethical improvement. So let's think about this in terms of claims, right? Now, uh, uh, so in this case, um, uh, a higher, uh, uh, this is y, this is x, higher has got a claim to uh, x, and lower has got a claim to y. One thing in general that might go to the strength of claims is the well-being difference. Right? The strength of my claim, claims have not just a valence but a strength, 
Uh, and the strength of claims might depend upon the well-being difference. But by construction, the PD case is a case in which the differences are equal. So uh, with respect to well-being differences, higher claims and lower claims have the same strength. With respect to responsibility to desert, they're equally uh, situated in that regard, so that washes out. And the only thing to differentiate their strengths is welding levels, right? Lower starts off at a lower level and ends up at a lower level, either lower or equally good. And so it seems that even if welding level really has, has just a little bit of relevance to claim strength, uh, uh, it should be the case that lower here is a stronger claim. So the idea here is that we use the claims framework to show kind of a deep unity between efficiency and equity. Uh, now, of course, you might not find the argument, but I think the argument is plausible, and so plausibly we show that connection. Finally, anonymity says if we just have a permutation of well-being levels, uh, uh, that's ethically indifferent. We just rearrange the well-being levels. Again, it's nice to see, you know, you might just impose this as a requirement of impartiality, but we can also sort of justify this in terms of claims. Uh, every uh, permutation, uh, uh, at least for the finite number of people, can be expressed as a series of two-person permutations. Right, so a two-person permutation would be um, 7, 12, 4, 60. Right. Now, here it seems in terms of claims, uh, uh, these are equally good. Right? The two just swap places, and so claim this way, claim this way, uh, uh, but same difference. Uh, and same in terms of levels, these are equally good. Uh, 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 and then because any permutation can be expressed as a series of these uh, by transitivity, uh, 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 any permutation is equally good uh, uh, as the starting point. Again, quasi-ordering means transitivity. I am assuming transitivity. Transitivity is sort of baked in uh, here. Sorry, Larry Kempkin. Okay, so without, uh, with undifferentiated responsibility to uh we get these three fundamental principles. Now, this does not get us all the way to uh, prioritarianism, um, uh, uh, but if we add a separability axiom, which is basically that uh, uh, um, uh, the, the well-being levels of unaffected people don't matter, so in this case, again, using numbers, these two people are at uh, the same well-being levels in these vectors, and so separability says, well, if we change their well-being levels, uh, that should not change their ranking. Um, uh, uh, if we add that axiom, we can talk about why, why to add that, but I think it's sort of at least pragmatically uh, very plausible. Uh, uh, and some technical axioms, so now we assume uh, that well-being is measurable, now we assume, we're going to assume that the ethical ranking is complete. Uh, we're going to assume a consistency axiom, uh, which is that the ranking of two outcomes is the same regardless of the you know, overall set of outcomes in which they're embedded. And finally, continuity, uh, putting those, uh, uh, so separability plus the fundamental axioms, so these are the fundamental axioms that we get to directly from the claims idea, plus separability, plus these four more technical axioms, gets us to prioritarianism. Right? Where now what we're doing is ranking out from by summing a concave function, strictly increasing strictly concave function of individual well-being. Okay, that's you know prioritarianism. I've argued for that ad nauseum. Uh, um, um, uh, so what I try to do in this Utiltar's article is now to take up. Um, Arneson's invitation to extend that to um, take account of dessert. Um, so, you know, he hasn't expressed you know, the notion here formally, so I'm going uh, 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 with the language and I'm trying to run with what seems to be a plausible way to uh, incorporate dessert. And so, so now we consider uh, using individual dessert to modulate the strength of individual claims. Right, so let's go back to the idea that claims have both a valence and a strength. Right, so I'm assuming still that they're valence by well-being, which seems very plausible. Right, things are very plausibly better from my perspective to the extent that I'm better off. Uh, but I'm imagining that individual dessert um, is uh, interpersonally uh, uh, differentiated, uh, and I want to have that uh, figure into the strength. And what I you know, uh, uh, show in this article, or in this article, is that if individual dessert is interpersonally differentiated, uh, but intrapersonally fixed, so each person's dessert level was fixed, even though dessert can vary among persons, the proposal works very well, and indeed we end up with a, um, uh, a dessert modulated version of continuous prioritarianism. That's uh, so Arneson is right. However, once we allow uh, uh, dessert to, to vary within persons, the proposal collapses. Right? So this is the second part of the talk, uh, which argues that for this reason, 
desert pyrotarianism is not an attractive version of blood pyrotarianism, and so that's going to move me on to the third, uh, much less developed part of the talk. Okay, so let's now think about uh, how things are going to work in the case of desert. So, right, as we said before, the valence of individual claims remains the same, valence by well being, right? But now the strength of an individual's non no claim uh, uh, depends upon her well being levels and difference and her desert. And again, dessert here can be whatever you think, right? Whatever you like. Dessert can be anything that you might think uh, plausibly could modulate the strength of claims. It can be prudence. It can be moral conscientiousness. It can be some mixture of those. Um, okay, so uh, if we add dessert in, we get, so the well being Pareto principles are the same as above, right? Because uh, claims are uh, valence by well being, right? So each person's equally well off. All no claims. Uh, some are better off. Others are equally uh, well off. Uh, uh, either positive claims or no claims, right? So the same argument for the welding Pareto principles. Now, in the case of, of Good Dalton, we have a weaker version of the PD principle, right? Which says, if we're transferring from higher to lower, higher starts are better off, lower is worse off, and we transfer a pure transfer, so higher, higher loses by the same amount that, that lower gains, and just lower is at least as deserving as higher. Right? Uh, uh, a higher is no better off and maybe worse off with respect to the third dimension of desert. In that case, uh, 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 the, the uh, transfer is a good thing. And so again, in terms of the strength of claims, now we have desert as the third thing that might influence claim strength, but in the case where someone is worse off, stands to gain no more, uh, uh, sorry, no less than the better off person loses and is more deserving, it seems in that case like the worse off one has a stronger claim. And so we're going to accept desert modulated for Uh Anonymity, now we're thinking of um, both well being and desert as being ethically relevant uh, uh, features. And so if we're going to have to sort of uh, do permutations, we're going to want to permute pairs of uh, well being uh, and desert attributes. Uh, uh, but um, uh, uh, if we permute change not just well-being levels, but desert levels at the same time, uh, that should make no difference. Again, every permutation of pairs of well-being and desert levels can be expressed as a series of two-person permutations of same logic, uh, uh, DM anonymity. So now we've got these three fundamental axioms plus a fourth, which is priority for the more deserving. Priority for the more deserving, again, says doesn't assume well-being or desert is measurable, but just to, uh, 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 basically what it says is that um, if one person is more deserving than the other, so Desi is more deserving and Leslie is less deserving, and they swap well-being levels such that Desi ends up better off and Leslie ends up worse off, then that's a good thing. You know, an equivalent way to think about that is if we start uh, where Desi and Leslie are at the same well-being level, and we have a fixed increment to give to the more deserving one or the less deserving one, we should give it to the more deserving one. Right? So now we have a fixed increment of well-being of delta, and we're assuming that uh, uh, Desi D1 has a higher dessert level than Leslie uh, D2, um, uh, and then priority from the more deserving says give it to Desi. Right? And again, in terms of the logic claim, this makes a lot of sense. Right? Now, Desi's claim to this, as opposed to Leslie's claim, well, they both start out at the same well-being level, so well-being level is not a factor. They both stand out to gain or lose the same amount, so well, the difference is not a factor. The only difference here is deserve. And so that should make it compelling uh, that one accepts priority for the more deserving. Uh, and indeed, I think even apart from the language of claims, this seems like a very plausible principle. So Einstein's got a lot of language that talks just about this. Okay, so we have now four fundamental principles. And we can add, uh, again, a separability type axiom, which says that if some people are unaffected between two outcomes, both in terms of well being and desert, uh, what the well being and desert levels uh, are should not matter. And technical axioms, we end up with a desert modulated version of uh, prioritarianism. Right? So now instead of having a simple prioritarianism, which just sums up a concave transformation of well being, we now have, we're summing this f function, so it's additive, it remains additive. We get to additivity by separability, uh, completeness, and continuity. Uh, um, it's additive, uh, there's a single f, we get that through the anonymity condition. Um, uh, and uh, f is such as to be increasing in concave and well being, uh, and it's satisfied by what I call the slope condition. Right? Um, so 
what that means is that uh, uh, at every well being point, um, uh, the slope of x uh, with respect to well being is greater for those who are more deserving. So this sort of shows you the idea here. So this is so a less deserving person. This is the more deserving person, d, d star, the higher level deserving of d. Um, and so uh, uh, f uh, um, uh, holding fixed dessert is increasing in concave in uh, well-being. Um, um, uh, oh, sorry, let me just say. So uh, if, I'm assuming if, if dessert is fixed, right, so each person's dessert level does not change, then we get to this. So first of all, it can be seen that if dessert is fixed, that summing these S values indeed satisfies the well-being Pareto principles, D and the Good Alton, uh, and priority from the more deserving. Right? That can be seen from this shape. So it satisfies, so if we make someone better off, that increases F, right? Uh, F is uh, increasing uh, in well-being. Uh, uh, it satisfies priority from the more deserving. That's a slope condition at each point. Right? If you're more deserving, you've got a, a higher slope. And so uh, if we uh, um, have to choose between giving this delta to the more deserving per person, which increases f by that, or giving the delta to the less deserving person, we give to the more deserving person. Uh, and finally, it satisfies the um, uh, good Dalton. So now we're transferring well-being from someone who is better off and less deserving to someone who is worse off and more deserving. And so. Um, uh, you know, I, uh, postpone that. Yeah, Alexa, go to sleep. Um, uh, probably even more deserved. Uh, sorry, uh, DM Good Alton. Uh, this transfer, so the F value goes down by this. Uh, uh, because uh, F uh, is concave in well being, uh, uh, even at the same dessert level, uh, uh, the F would increase by this. And then because the slope here is bigger, it increases by even more. So. Uh, um, D and the is a transfer from a better off, less deserving person to a worse off, more deserving person is an improvement. Indeed, you get this. Now, so it's obvious that this F formula with dessert fix is sufficient to satisfy the fundamental axiom. We actually have a characterization result, which is that it's necessary. Right? If dessert is fixed and we satisfy the fundamental axioms of Pareto, D and the Dalton, D and anonymity, priority to more deserving, plus the technical axioms, that ranking of outcome has got to be represented by uh, this F function. Um, so if there's a technical result here, it's not a major one really, uh, there's that uh, result. That looks great. Good for Dick Arneson. It looks like we have come up with a, you know, a formula that sort of uh, incorporates his insight. Uh, but the problem is that when dessert varies uh, within persons, uh, the thing falls apart in the sense of violating well-being Pareto. So um, this is an example. So one simple way, I mean, there are different ways to you know, get at this F function, but a simple way to achieve this is simply to take your ordinary uh, increasing concave, uh, strictly increasing concave, concave G function, and then multiply that by dessert, assuming dessert is positive, or multiply that by um, uh, you know, uh, some increasing function of dessert. That's going to uh, work. So let's just do that here. Let's assume uh, that the F here is, is uh, the g function here is the square root, the f is just dessert, and so we have now the uh, square root of well-being times dessert. That's these numbers. Um, so here is the f value, uh, uh, and now the max. And now imagine that we change dessert within persons, right? So Ellie goes from 2 to 3, and Tina goes from 3 to 2. Lo and behold, f value is still up, but no, violates well-being cradle difference. Right? LA is equally well off, Tina is equally well off, uh, and we can obviously violate well being shrunk Pareto uh, uh, by a small change. Now we simply reduce uh, LA's well being by a small amount, Tina's well being by a small amount. So using sort of the product of the square root of well being and dessert, um, uh, 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 now LA's F value is 21.7, uh, Tina's 9.8, we sum up. This is a greater sum of F values, but that violates well being strong Pareto. Right? It violates well being weak Pareto. Both Tina and Ellie are worse off. So we got a problem here um, with this uh, uh, F function in the case of uh, changing dessert. Uh, and indeed, you're going to see that in the graph. Right? So imagine that we, don't, we take this person, 
and we don't change her well-being, we just increase her dessert. Her F value goes up, her well-being doesn't change. That's an obvious violation uh, of uh, strong Pareto. Imagine we make her um, uh, worse off, but increase her dessert. Her F value can go up, so that's a violation of, of, uh, of, of strong Pareto. So the F function violates um, uh, uh, the Pareto principles uh, with interpersonal differentiating the first dessert, but actually the problem is deeper. Uh, the problem is really um, uh, inconsistency uh, between priority for the more deserving, again, this deep idea, intuitive idea that we should uh, give uh, a well-being increment uh, to the more deserving one, assuming that the two people start from the same well-being levels and it's a fixed increment. There is a fundamental tension between that and uh, the Pareto difference. So even if we forget all the other actions that get us to the F function, there's just a basic tension there. Uh, uh, and if we add simply uh, measurability and anonymity and continuity, there's also a tension between consistency between priority for the more deserving and um, strong Pareto. Uh, so this shows the basic conflict. Um, uh, how am I doing time wise, Kevin? Uh, you've got about half an hour. Okay, good. Um, uh, okay. Um, sorry. That's good. Sorry, 25 minutes. <laughs> uh, keep, keep me fast here. It's good. Uh, um, so th this shows the basic conflict with, with, with uh, Pareto indifference, which is that, again, when dessert can uh, uh, change interpersonally. So now imagine we've got these four outcomes. Now these are not well-being numbers, these are simply well-being bases, bases in the sense that, um, uh, for example, W Jim here means some set of attributes uh, of Jim that, 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 that determine his well-being, right? Um, uh, w Sally is a, you know, uh, Sally's uh, uh, well-being attributes. And uh, these are such that if two individuals have, uh, have W, uh, they're at the same well-being level. So, uh, sorry, so, um, uh, you know, uh, Sally here is the same well-being level as Jim here. You know, whatever, whatever their attributes are at the same well-being level, uh, and the stars mean the same well-being level, and the star level is at a higher well-being level. Okay, so if that's the case, if we have four outcomes like this, we can and dessert can vary. Uh, uh, and again, the star level here uh, is a higher level of dessert. So now the D's are uh, uh, dessert bases. Um, here's the conflict. So well-being Pareto indifference says if we're going to swap well-being levels, um, sorry, a uh, uh, PMD, priority for more, more deserving, this is the conflict again between priority for more deserving and well-being Pareto indifference. If we're going to swap well-being levels between people with fixed dessert, give the higher well-being to the, to the more deserving one. All right? So here, you get fixed dessert, give the higher well-being to the more deserving one, so that says, give it to Sally, not Jim. So by PMD, Y is better than X. Now we swap a dessert. By Pareto indifference, Y is equally good as EZ. Oh my god, we changed dessert, and now we should swap well-being again. Right? By priority from deserving, uh, Z is better than ZZ. And by well-being, uh, uh, Pareto indifference, X and Y are equally good. So that's the side note. So Y better than X, equally good as ZZ. Worse than Z equals as X is intransitive, right? Can't do that. Uh, um, and if we add continuity, we produce a conflict uh, with uh, a well-being strong Pareto. Again, we start with X. Uh, uh, Prior to more deserving says, gee, give the um, uh, better well-being level to the more deserving one here, Sally. So Y better than X by continuity. That's true if we subtract a little epsilon. So Y plus better than X. And now we just permute uh, combinations of well-being and dessert. So we just rearrange here. So Z plus equally good as Y plus, uh, um, uh, better than X. But now we got a violation of strong Pareto, right? Because each person is worse off. All right. So problems for uh, prioritarian for dessert prioritarianism. Um, okay. So now we're on to actually another third part of the talk. So I've got. Ten minutes. Uh, so, uh, 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 and again, so the, the first part of the talk, um, you know, uh, um, I've wasted a lot of papers out in print. The second part of the talk, uh, the problems with that the first part of the talk simply being characterizing uh, or arguing for prioritarianism with undifferentiated dessert uh, in terms of claims, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, 
published on that. The second part of the talk, this attempt to uh, uh, you know, uh, extend the framework to uh, 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 dessert, and the failure of that is this forthcoming article in Utility Talks. It's actually not ready. This is not out uh, in, in paper. Um, so what are the other possible structures? All right, so let me just work through this. So one possibility. So what I do, you know, what I did in the dessert part here is to assume that the currency for individuals, right, the currency for these individual claims and standpoints is well-being. So claims just remain balanced by well-being, and dessert is just a modulator. And if that's right, in some sense, it's not so surprising that we get a problem, because if claims are balanced by well-being, then we're going to want well-being Pareto principles. And once we bring in some non-welfare factor in landing dessert, we're going to have a conflict. So I show that happens once dessert uh, can change. So what if we have a different kind of currency, right? So what if we think of not well-being, but some hybrid of well-being and dessert as being the currency, right? So we can characterize individuals in terms of some hybrid. Right? Um, uh, so claims are now balanced by this hybrid, right? And, well, what's going to happen? So, again, we're going to, not instead of, we're going to have the, the generic Pareto principles, uh, uh, but those will become more specifically these hybrid Pareto principles, right? Uh, so, if everyone has the same level of the hybrid dessert well being currency in, in X is in Y, then they'd be really good. A uh, hybrid strong Pareto, if everyone has at least much hybrid currency in Y is in X, and some of more Y is better than X. Um, and we can have, uh, you know, a kind of, let's call it hybrid prioritarianism, right? So if we can measure uh, this hybrid uh, dessert well-being currency, uh, uh, this is H for hybrid, we can measure each person's uh, uh, level of the hybrid currency and then plug that into a content transformation function and that would be a hybrid uh, uh, prioritarianism that would satisfy the hybrid Pareto principles, it would satisfy the Kudo in terms of the hybrid currency, it would satisfy hybrid anonymity and so forth, and that would work perfectly well with both interpersonally fixed and interpersonally variable reserve. Right? No problem there formally, but, um, and, and Bill Rowe is, is writing about this as well, uh, 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 um, uh, and his different views about this, but my own view is that this hybrid well being deserved currency is not substantively plausible. Right? So I don't think this is a substantively plausible candidate for the thing that drives these person centered rankings, and we can talk about that. Uh, but, um, number one, our changes in James' dessert holding constant her well-being. So the higher you know, currency is going to be such that even if we hold constant someone's well-being but change her dessert, her level of the currency goes up or down. Does that really make things better or worse from James' perspective? Right? Does that, in some sense, encapsulate how things look for Jane? I'm not persuaded by that. Uh, we also have problems uh, if we think uh, whether, you know, we try to figure out whether dessert is going to be a positive or negative contributor to the hybrid currency. Uh, there are problems there uh, as uh, well. All right, so two other uh, possibilities. One is to, uh, um, to go back to the notion that claims are balanced by well-being. So well-being seems to be a very plausible thing to be the currency for claims. But now have those discounted by responsibility. Right? So now the idea is that um, uh, the uh, uh, strength of your claim Right, is going to be discounted by the extent to which you're responsible for being worse off. Right, so that if, if someone is uh, 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 the strength of someone's claim to Y over X, assuming she's better off than Y, is discounted by her degree of responsibility for the gap. Right, that is to say, if X were to obtain, to what extent should, would she be responsible uh, for her shortfall in well-being as compared to Y? Right, and I sort of uh, uh, one way to I have unpublished work on this or not. Uh, 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 um, uh, written up, but it hasn't published. One way to think about that um, uh, is as follows. Uh, 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 basically, uh, uh, if someone had behaves fully prudently in an outcome, uh, then her degree of responsibility for being worse off than she might have been in some other outcome is zero. Uh, if not, you know, let W star be the level of well-being that she could have guaranteed herself by behaving prudently. Right? And if that level was actually better off than she would have been in Y where she's better off, then she's fully responsible. Right? The whole gap between X and Y is her responsibility. Um, and if W star is in between the well-being level of X and Y, then we can use that to quantify her degree of responsibility. Right? The portion of the gap between X and Y, which is her fault, uh, uh, that is W star, how she could have what she could have guaranteed herself by being prudently. Uh, minus the worst of level over the whole gap might be her degree of responsibility. 
that is going to produce uh, intransitivities. Um, we can talk about that, but that also uh, falls apart. Um, uh, the basic problem here is that um, take William. William is worse open to z than y and, and z than x. And so he is responsible to the same extent for his gap between z and y and his gap between z and x because he could have done stuff in z to uh, make himself perhaps better off in y or better off in x. But now, uh, if we consider Xavier, two different outcomes, y and x, where he's at the same mean level when he's worse off than z, his degree of responsibility for the y z difference need not be the same as the degree of responsibility for the x z difference, because there might be things he could have done in y to make himself better off in z, which are not the same as in x. That is, these are different possible worlds. Right? The effects of the choices are different, even though we set the same well-being level. Right? Uh, uh, how well he could have been if he had behaved prudently uh, will be different. And so that's going to lead to uh, an intransitivity. And so I'll stop with what I think is the, the more plausible approach, which is simply to think of uh, well-being opportunity uh, as the currency for claims. Right? So uh, um, uh, uh, the idea is this. So for a given outcome x and an individual y, we can identify her opportunity set. Right? Not simply her actual well-being, but the whole set of outcomes that she could have produced by three choices. Right? And you know, I don't have this here, but this is what I'm writing up here is just really just a decision tree. So this is uh, uh, an individual in x faces different situations of free choice, right? And in point of fact, she makes certain choices. These are choice nodes. Um, lo and behold, at each choice node, this is her first in time uh, choice situation. She could have done something different. Had she done something different, there would have been different choices and so forth. So we can figure out her whole decision tree. Uh, and each path of that tree is an outcome. Right? Uh, it's the outcome that would have occurred had she made all those choices. Uh, 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 and more specifically, uh, these are what I call free choice situations. These are choice situations in which uh, at least some of the choices are free choices, right? Uh, 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 and um, uh, again, it's only free choices that we want individuals to be responsible for. Uh, and so basically, OIX is the uh, set of all outcomes corresponding to all points, all paths to the decision tree. Uh, 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 starting with individualized first free choice situation in X. Uh, and then we can value that, and we can value that in different ways, but one plausible way to do that is to consider only admissible choice chains, right, past the decision tree, right? So we say basically um, uh, we're going to value the opportunity set on the assumption that you make prudent choices. To the extent that you make imprudent choices and so uh, 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 the outcomes from that are lower, that's your fault. Right? We're only going to consider how well off you could have been if you had chosen prudent paths through the tree or admissible in some other sense. Uh, and then we're just going to plug that into the prior uh, uh, formula. Now, the virtues of that, and I wish Kristen were here, I mean, um, uh, this is completely agnostic about the nature of free choice. It's completely agnostic. I say, what I say is, whatever you think about free choice, if you're compatibilist and you've got one compatibilist in your free choice, you know, there's lots of different compatibilists in your free choice. If you're an incompatibilist, but if you're not a hard determinist, you think free will is compatible with indeterminism. Whatever that is, characterize the free choice situations and the paths and for the decision tree involving free choices and figuring out the set of outcomes corresponding to that. Right? So it's completely agnostic about the nature of free choice. I mean, I don't want to have to solve the problem of free will to propose a structure for luck prioritarianism. Um, uh, 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 and uh, I think opportunity is a plausible currency for claims. Right? How well off you could be, were you to behave prudently, seems to be a plausible way uh, to uh, think about what's better from an individual perspective. Now, again, this is where Kristen would be helpful. Um, uh, there are issues with indeterminacy here. Uh, 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 so are these, you know, we're asking, if you were to make this sequence of free choices, what would the outcome be? Right? So we're thinking in terms of subjunctive uh, counterfactuals. Those are not necessarily determinant. There's an indeterminacy here. Uh, uh, I'm not quite sure how to deal uh, uh, with that. That's true even if the laws of nature are deterministic. And, you know, if we have 
nomic indeterminacy of the problem may become uh, a bigger one. All right, I think I did 40. Uh, with your indulgence, we're uh, droning on, but I'm now happy to be ripped apart. Thank you.